Hi, my name is Steve Fox, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the SharePoint 2013 app model. Um, there's three different types of apps in SharePoint 2013. Uh, you can see uh, in the slide here, we've got SharePoint hosted, auto hosted, and provider hosted. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on each of these, uh, the SharePoint hosted, in essence, is made up of static files. Uh, there's no server side code allowed when you build these SharePoint hosted apps, so you will typically use HTML and or uh, JavaScript or other types of script languages uh, to deploy into SharePoint. Uh, and just know that when you deploy that SharePoint app, it just gets deployed into a special app domain within SharePoint. Um, Auto-hosted really is made up of two parts, the app part and the actual web application. The app part is mainly configuration information which gets deployed into SharePoint and the web app gets automatically deployed into Azure. Uh, now, it's not only automatically deployed into Azure, but it's managed for you as well. So you get like one bill uh, and, uh, and you get to use a subset of the Azure functionality to build out and deploy that app. So that's nice. It's a nice kind of flexible and easy to use and easy to maintain type app. The provider hosted is the most flexible out of the three apps. Uh, and basically, you know, what this means is I can take my web portion of the uh, app that you build and you can deploy it into Azure or other types of domains, whether it's IIS, Azure, or other, uh, and then connect it uh, using OAuth and uh, some other methods back to your SharePoint app. So similar to the auto-hosted, you'll have an app and a web part, and you connect them. But again, it's important to remember that the web part is something that you manage, hence the flexibility. So as noted here, you could be a PHP developer uh, with a Linux machine and still be able to build SharePoint apps, which really is a first for for SharePoint development and is exciting. So let's jump into uh, where we have left off last time. Uh, where I left you last time was you would built out your development environment uh, and you have that up and running now. So if you go into my SharePoint site collection here, you can see I've got a few apps that have been deployed. Um, and some of these are SharePoint hosted, some of them are auto hosted, some of them are provider hosted. Now in this session, really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my Visual Studio here. And let me just clean this up. Uh, and basically, I'm going to create two types of projects, SharePoint hosted and auto hosted. Uh, I'll, I'll very briefly talk to provider hosted, but I'm actually going to dedicate a full session to it. Uh, because really, it's a little more complicated. Uh, some things you really have to just talk about when we talk about Azure or other types of domains that you need to remember. So I'm going to spend a little more time separately uh, for those for the provider hosted app. But let's go ahead and create a new project. Um, and you can see here that we've got a couple things going on. We've got in my, I'm optimized here for Visual C Sharp. So I'm gonna go into Office Wax SharePoint apps. And you can see I've got app for Office and app for SharePoint 2013. Uh, let's do my new SharePoint app and we'll click okay. You can see here then that we have these three choices down here auto hosted provider hosted and sharepoint hosted now again this maps to what i just told you on that slide and for each of these is a project template with different features built into it that allow you to deploy into sharepoint and or deploy into a separate uh, domain so let's go ahead and, and select sharepoint hosted first and i'll click finish and so what's happening now is visual studio is creating the code spit for me so all the default elements of my project my sharepoint hosted project and you can see on the right hand side here there's a number of them uh, you can see that we've got this is the project here you can see we've got images which is where your icon would live for your project files um, you've got pages so your default.aspx any scripts that you want to add into your app and so on and so forth um, if we go into content uh, you can see that we have the or i'm sorry pages rather you can see that we have the default.aspx page that's this guy right here that automatically loaded in when we created the project. And you can see that there's some content here, but it's uh, you know just code spit, right? So if we look at the actual code, it's basically just some text that says initializing. So if I were to F5 this now, you just see initializing, and that's not super interesting. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit of code, and we'll just go ahead and grab that and replace that here. Um, so if you see the code here, it's fairly simple. 
it's just illustrative of the fact that I can A, a link to either script or style sheet files, and B, I can add a little bit of JavaScript here. And this is a simple function, the hello function. Uh, sets the current date using the date method here to the current time variable. Uh, it uses the jQuery get uh, method, as you can see here, uh, and sets the inner HTML of the time div div, which is this here, to the current date time formatted specifically for the date string. And you can see this is going to happen when you hit the push me button, okay, which is going to call the hello function. Very complicated stuff, I know, but interesting because it just illustrates the fact that I'm, like I said before, I'm taking no server side code, it's all script, and I'll go ahead and just debug this so you can see what this looks like. Uh huh, debug. Um, and takes this, this script and HTML, kind of puts it together and, and drives it into an app. Now, um, typically, when you go ahead and build out and install these apps, it may take anywhere from you know, 10 to 15 seconds to a minute or so. Uh, don't be alarmed if there's, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. That's fairly normal, depending on bandwidth, depending on your app, and so on and so forth. Okay. We can now see that SharePoint's opening up, and we should be able to see the very simple app. Okay, here we go. There's the button, push me button, and I'll go ahead and push it, and then, of course, it called the function, got the current date time, and then displayed it in the that particular format. So again, a very simple example here of uh, a simple app. Let's go ahead and, and kill that. And uh, go ahead and add a new app here, which is the auto-hosted app. So the auto-hosted is really interesting. Uh, my new app d2. Click OK. As I mentioned before, auto-hosted really has two parts to it when you create it. There's a application web part and then there's this uh, configuration part. Uh, here you can see, let's just, you know, close these here and then zoom in a little bit. You can see that my new app v2 and v2 web are the two different parts that make up this application. Okay. Now if we look in, into these with a little more detail, we can see that inside the web part we have all the typical uh, constituent parts that you would expect to find in an ASP.NET web app. You know, we have pages, we have scripts, uh, we do have this thing called a token helper, which manages the OAuth, and we'll actually drill into this in a, another session, so uh, we won't pay too much attention to it here, other than kind of walking through a little bit of the code, but just know we'll cover that later. And in the, um, in the configuration, the .app effectively, which gets deployed into SharePoint, you can see that we've got things like some general metadata, some permissions, any prerequisites we want to deploy, and so on and so forth. Uh, associated with this particular file. Uh, you can see here that we have to set a particular scope uh, of permissions and what I'll do is I'll just do full control for this because this is a demo. You'll probably want to lock that down a little bit. You can also take a look and view the code. It's not just a designer driven experience here. So you can see here that uh, I've got the app permission that I just set, uh, app permission requests to the web and full control. So um, just make sure you always set that, otherwise your app won't uh, actually deploy properly or won't be able to access it properly. And um, similar to the SharePoint hosted app, you get a little bit of code spit here. There's not a lot here. Uh, so what I've done, I've already built out an app just to kind of keep things flowing along here. Uh, and in the pages, you can see that if we jump into our pages and look at the design, I've built out a fairly simple app that is an employee list, uh, it's got a couple of text box or a text box and a list box. It's got a button here, a link button that allows you to add a name from this field and display it here. Very exciting stuff, I know, but again, illustrated with the fact that this is just a simple app. We want to make sure that you understand the app and the components of the app. So uh, if we look at the code behind, um, here's some class level variables we're setting. And as I mentioned, the token helper is the OAuth manager so and this is because we're kind of deploying to a separate domain so we have to make sure that uh, this is authenticated for use in SharePoint. Uh, this is some information here that allows us to set certificate trust, uh, context token, so again just this OAuth code that sets some trust levels. 
Uh, and again, we'll cover that in a future session. If we look at the core code, the event that is hanging off the link button, that's here. So we can see that uh, we've got this string employee name here, which was set as a class level variable to null. We're going to grab that property, set it to that, that variable, the string variable. And of course, we're just going to add it as a new list item uh, into the list box names. Okay. So uh, rather than deploying this and sp spending the, the second or two to do that, I'll go ahead because I've already deployed it and show you what that looks like. Uh, in essence, uh, when you deploy it, it, um, it looks like what I just showed you. And this is indeed what this app would look like. So we'll go John Doe, hit add employee. And there we go, it adds it into the list box. Uh, we can also uh, show that there is a little bit of error code here. So if you leave that null, it would uh, give you a little message here saying, please enter a valid name. So fairly simple, uh, a couple of examples. Uh, what I'll do is, as I said, I don't want to go too deep into the uh, provider hosted app because I think uh, that deserves its own kind of special treatment. I will just show you right quick uh, and leave you with, if you add a new project here, and let's go my new app v3, click OK. And if you hit provider hosted, you'll see that now we have different configuration information that we have to provide when we're walking through the wizard. Uh, here you can see that we can use a certificate or client secret. And again, just to leave you here, basically what this means is you're going to be deploying this app into a separate domain where the auto hosted app automatically deploys it. You would in essence have to right click here and publish into your own domain. Uh, and again, I'll walk through this in a, in a future session. But uh, it's really interesting. It, it, it you know, comprises these two pieces, much like the auto-hosted app model. Uh, and so you can go ahead and build out your ASP.NET app, whether it's an MVC or other. Uh, and then you can set the configuration within your, uh, within your app manifest. Um, you will have to make sure this client secret is a part of your app. And of course, that helps you bring these two together when you actually deploy it into SharePoint. Uh, so with that, I think um, I'll leave you here for this particular, uh, this particular session, and we'll pick it up again with the provider hosted apps in our next session and do a little bit of a deep dive on that. So thank you very much, and we'll talk with you soon.